What's up? Today's video, we're gonna be working on Rick's boat. It's a pro line racing 600 something cubic inch big box with twin 102 millimeter precision pro mods. Uh, this thing is wicked. It's had some uh, water cooled manifolds on it before. Uh, a few videos back, you'll see me building these custom headers. They're not water cooled, but they're gonna get the job done. We're gonna build a little heat shields around around the fiberglass. But the water cool manifolds, we've been having problems with wastegate priority. So we're trying to do a little better this time. So we built new headers, new dump tubes. Was able to salvage this piece to match because the downpipes was still the same from before. We're converting it from carburetor to EFI. The intake manifold is that Wilson manifold right now getting bummed. And we're gonna do, this boat has an air water intercooler because this is the craziest thing. Lake water and river water is free. And it's very abundant. <laughs> when he told me that, I'm just like, it's genius to run air water intercooler on these things. Like, you think air water intercooler and you think race car, you know, on a car. Ice box, this and that and everything. But we run a, a air water intercooler back here you pump lake water or uh, river water, wherever you're at, uh, through it, stays cold all the time, and it just works out great. So, we're modifying the intercooler that I had on this boat before. It had some rigid V-bands. Uh, it's got dual three inch inlet and a single three and a half inch outlet. And I'm getting rid of the regular V-bands. We're doing vibrant HD clamps because it's gonna be rigid mounted to the framework of the boat which the engine is rigid mounted also, but I don't want to allow any vibration between the two to, to stress anything. So with those uh, flexible clamps, it's gonna help out because we have rigid V-bands on the compressor housings and on, let me get the intake. Uh, throttle body. So we have a billet, uh, 105 throttle body with a uh, V-band and it's going to be looking backwards and going right from the intercooler in and this is going to kind of snake around and dump in the top. I've already got the old V-bands cut off so I'm going to set the new vibrant clamps up there and start welding those on and let y'all see how bad of a welder I am with aluminum. Have fun. We still alive? So like you saw, I, I weld them on the inside just because aluminum's a little more prone to break or stress or anything like that. Not saying that you know my weld is gonna break or anything like that. It just needs all the strength that it can get really. So you just kinda put the O-ring here Put an O-ring on this one. This one will be welded to the charge pipe. Then you slip this sleeve over the O-rings. And from there, you pop this clamp around it. Like that. Way harder to do with the O-rings. 
the sleeve, I mean, when to get the sleeve on is a job. So you got that much, got that much wiggle room flexibility. So it's like having a coupler with a V-band. So it works really well. This is probably the best product Vibrant makes. They make a lot of good stuff. But this is probably, this is probably their uh, best thing in my opinion that they manufacture. Just cause it's so good looking. A V-band is really too industrial looking to me. I mean, I, I, mean, I like V-bands and everything. Um, but it just, I don't know how else to describe it besides industrial looking, a V-band. I think it's way easier to operate than that. I just make it look hard, like all things. So that's that's it. So you got all this. So the the this is going to be rigid mounted to a frame rail runner there and there. The engine is rigid mounted also, but any flex in the in the boat or anything like that because it's just fiberglass. And it's gonna be hitting waves and river, you know, the river and uh, lakes, stuff like that. <clears throat> so anything that makes it flex is just gonna be stressing on the on the clamps, anything like that. And just man, these just look great. It's gonna look really, really good. Next thing I'm gonna do is I have some measurements wrote down. I gotta cut some. I got some aluminum flat bar over there. It's quarter inch thick. It's quarter inch thick. Four inches wide. I'm gonna cut a four and a half inch long piece and a two inch long piece. So it's gonna be like a four and a half tall by two inches wide, four inches all the way. The whole drill and this piece is gonna be welded right here. So it's gonna be a four inch or four and a half inch long piece, four inches wide, with two inches coming up for a kicker and a bolt hole is gonna go through there. I'll probably run like another piece back up or a gusset or something like that. It's gonna be. Um, just mount it to two frame rails. I'm gonna do that next. So we have these little L brackets made. I didn't record it because it was kind of boring to me. And they, they're leaning in a little bit. This one more than that one kind of, but I might adjust it, I don't know. There's a weld right up in here on this. And from this end to that end, it need to be 26 inches. And so I just built it kind of square and then tapped it Tap this one in, tap this one in, so that was 26, and that was 26, because it fits in between a frame rail here and a frame rail here. I'll bend that one back up a little bit in a second. But I gotta drill a hole and drill a hole so we can mount it. And then from there, run the pipe to the turbo, the pipe to the turbo. The intake manifold is at Wilson Manifolds right now, getting uh, bongs and fuel rails and everything mounted up. So when it gets back, then we'll do this one. But for now, we're gonna get it in there, get it bolted up after we drill the holes and start plumbing. So after a few little trims and had to trim like a quarter inch off each one of these brackets right here on both sides to let it fit in between this runner. It's pretty strong, like I can't even get it to move. It's, uh, it's in there pretty stout, pretty stout. So. This bolt hole was already there for this brace that goes across, so I didn't have to drill any new holes. And now we're gonna try to run from these two pipes to the turbos. The intake manifold is at Wilson right now getting modified for fuel injection. And so the bin we have to do has to make it under this down pipe just about, which is not a lot of room and some know this is a average size bend so you can just imagine imagine about 90 degrees right here where my thumb is on that would be about right there so it it wouldn't fit but vibrant makes these tight bends they're not casted they're mandrel i guess they're mandrel but they're not cast aluminum they're regular tubing and so what I'll do is get the old trusty eyeball out and just as soon as my eye sees 
how I see something level is I put my eyeball from here to here. And when I see right there, that's level. And I'll take this and I'll put my eyeball on either side and try to hold it 90. What I'll do is I'll make a mark on this side and the side where my thumb is and cut this piece off. Why I didn't buy a 90, and this is a 120 degree bend. Why I didn't buy a 90 is because Vibrant is out of stock and they're on intergalactic back order. So the best thing to do if you want to get your parts now, buy too much of a bend and cut it a little bit. Okay, so what I thought I was gonna do, I changed my mind. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld the compressor outlet flange to this tight radius 90, come over here, and this is the rest of the 30 degree bend off this 120 degree bend. And I'm gonna take this 180, because I don't have any two 90s. I'm gonna cut this 180 in half, weld this end here, making this face over that way about right here i'm going to put a little extension piece in there it's going to go over there and bam into the compressor housing that's going to be on both sides it's going to work out it's nice and simple uh, it's going to be real tight off the turbos to allow room for the fuel injectors and carb hat i mean the throttle body and all that so it's going to work out great So what I did is cut, I cut the other 120 degree bend to make two 90s. They're kind of 90, close enough. So we're gonna come, we're gonna weld these two here. I'm gonna cut this in half, put one half on this, making it come about right here. I'll do the other half over there, like I said. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and weld both of these on. And then while they're cooling off, I'll, I'll cut this in half and cut the flanges because we're gonna reuse, we're gonna reuse these flanges because they're about a hundred bucks a piece. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this old flange off, clean the pipe out of it and get it ready to, to weld this one to it. Welding, welding aluminum takes a different process. The, the carbon steel, stainless steel, all that type of stuff is direct current, DC. And so that's just a direct current power cycling out of the torch, into the workpiece, and back to the ground. Just constant power. The aluminum uh, oxide is so fast, I guess is the word, uh, the oxide layer has to be stripped off there. So the alternating current, it, it strips the oxide layer, heats it up, strips the oxide layer, heats it up over and over and over. You can set on the settings how many times per second it's gonna strip and heat, how long it strips versus how long it heats. Uh, and just a whole bunch of different things to, to get it set up for what you're gonna do. If the material is really, really dirty, you're gonna want it to strip a whole bunch and then heat a little, strip a whole bunch, heat a little, uh, that type of thing. But I'm always working on brand new clean material, so I don't have to strip it as, as much as I heat it up.
steel. And there's a big misconception about aluminum that it dissipates heat real fast. It does do that, but the flip-flop side of that is it absorbs heat just as fast as it releases it. So, say you have a piece real long, you weld right here, the whole thing gets hot fast. And it honestly stays hot longer than regular steel to me, uh, the whole work from steel. I'm not sure what the problem was. But this one's got like super penetration, which the backside of this bend is a little thin. But I know the flange is not the problem. It's got to be this bend because it's got like a lot of impurities that came out to the top it made the weld really rough and it didn't want to heat up the heat didn't want to stay on the pipe it wanted to stay on the flange very strange so i had measured from this, this bend, this bend is this bend. Come up with this straight piece. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna weld this straight piece to this tight 90 coming out of the compressor housing. And then I'll make up a piece for right here and then tack all that together.
those, that, that turned out really well. Uh, I'm real happy with that. So it makes me feel a, a ton better from those two V bands I welded earlier. It's like a, uh, <laughs> it's like a submarine telescope thing. Like, that's hilarious. That, that piece turned out great. I'm thinking, since me and Rick are kind of buddies, I might not weld it on the outside and see what happens. We got a pretty, pretty beefy uh, weld on the inside. I think it looks pretty neat with no weld right there. I think people will scratch their heads when they see it. I think I might not weld it for now. If it comes back apart, we'll fix it later. But I think I'm gonna uh, leave that weld there, not weld it on the, on the outside, and see how it turns out. It'll make it just a little bit cleaner look, maybe. This thing, this thing's doing things. I mean, look at that. That tight band out of there, man, that thing looks dope. From back here, it doesn't look as cool. Let's see if I can come around the front. Look at that thing, holy cow. It just looks, I don't know, it looks amazing to me. So, we got that there, and the next step is going to be to measure, put this like that, looking down this piece, to measure, we got two and a quarter, so we'll cut, cut us a little straight piece, two and a quarter, and uh, if this was a 90, it would have been best you know, a leg, but you know, I cut this out of 180. It'd been, it'd been better to have a leg, so it'd be one weld instead of one and two, but that's all we got to work with right now. Oof, too much. Thing is the real deal. Yeah, if I had a piece a quarter inch longer. That would freaking do it. I'm gonna cut that real quick. Let's keep reaching higher.
Cooks, what do you think about that boat? Looks fast. Looks fast? What'd you get in it? No. You can catch hella fish hella quick, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Fighter jet or something. Yeah, Rick's like 80 years old. So yeah, World War One fighter jet. They have jets in World War One. I know. That's, <laughs> a biplane. that's what makes it funny. It's a biplane. <laughs> I played with it, like, you see all the bins I got back there? For like an hour, I was like holding bins, holding bins, and really this bin, the Type 90, was supposed to go down off the intercooler, and they were gonna like come down and like, like 45 this way and like flip up. Yeah, but being up like that's gonna give you more room for your injectors and yeah. And yeah. I just like. It'll be all kind of spaced up around it, I think, when I look. Yeah, because the throttle body's gonna be like right here. And then I just love this tight. I got a I got a big I got a good weld on the inside of this. I was thinking about not welding it on the outside. That'd be cool. I think it looks pretty neat. You can do a little right to the throttle body. Yeah. So that tight radius three and a half in in there. Nope. Oh, yeah. Um, Cause it's it's not it's not exactly ninety because the throttle body looks down a little bit. But that's just all I, that's all Summit had. That's gonna wrap this video up. It's a big old thick boy right here. This thing is just, it's just a dang unit, man. Look at it. I love this pipe right here. And it's just like so, everything just kind of flows. I don't know the, like the real smart person word for it, but how everything just, <laughs> just flows, like, I'm like, super pumped like this is the time in these in the builds that i'm like oh yes because like 80 percent of a build i'm like man i hate this i hate this i hate this and then it starts piecing together and then like the last 20 percent, i'm just like heck yeah this is awesome so video is running a little long uh so we're gonna have to do like a, a part three but this has been uh, a pretty neat little deal right here so be on the lookout for part three. We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a part two on Ray's Corvette back there next, and be looking out for that super special project if you haven't seen it already. So, we'll see you on the next one.